Let's bring him in now, forward for the Atlanta Hawks, Damari Carroll. Damari, how are you, man? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, no problem, no problem. Damari, great run by you guys against the Pacers. You were pretty close to a huge upset. I mean, in game six, you were up five with three minutes to go. Ultimately, the Pacers will win that game, and ultimately, they will win that series. I think you guys outplayed the Pacers. I really do. But do you think you guys let one slip away? Yeah, we did. Um, it was a tough loss. We, um, I think we played better than them the whole series. It was a good matchup for us. Um, we kind of played our style of basketball, and we kind of let it slip away. And, um, you know, you got to get Indiana credit. You know, they've been in that position before, and they um, they kept fighting. But at the same time, I think we done made a – we have made a good run, and I think it's only going to help us for next year. Now, going into that series, did you think you guys had a legitimate shot to beat the Pacers? Because you matched up well against them. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we had a great shot. I think uh, we, we've been we was playing we've been dominating throughout the season, um, and I knew in playoffs we had a great shot. But um, we just can't we just can't put it all together, man. It was a uh, right. Good run, but, you know, at the same time, we got to learn from it, and we we got to put ourselves in that position again. Now, I, I looked at the series, and I saw how the Pacers, how they closed the games, and watching the way they closed out those games, I, I think there was a difference in experience, and you saw that difference in experience. Did you think that was the case? Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, we had a bunch of new guys, uh, first-time coach, uh, all new assistant coaches, and, you know, everything was new. And uh, a lot of people didn't expect us to be there, and I think we got there. And at the same time, the experience kind of, you know, didn't help us any. So we just, you know, we got to learn from that. I think uh, we got a good group of guys. We bring a lot of key guys back, you know, Al Horford to be back. So I think, man, right. the sky's the limit for us. We're talking Atlanta Hawks forward Damari Carroll. And let's talk about Al Horford. He goes down in December at that point in time, when out when you lose Al Horford, I mean, what was the mindset of the team? Did you think the playoffs was still a shot for you guys? Did you think you guys had a shot to make the playoffs even with Horford out? Oh yeah, yeah, we uh, we got a lot of good guys, man. A lot of guys, people you know don't really know, or when their name appear on the rosters, you really don't know. But I think uh, Payroll Antique he did a great job for us. Elton Brand came in and did a great job for us. Even Gustavo did a great job until he got hurt. So um, I think, man, we just we got a lot of good guys in that system that you know Coach Bud brought from San Antonio has really helped everybody. And I think uh, he simplified a lot of the offense. And uh, I think it's helping everybody and helping everybody expand that game. Talk about Coach Budenhauser. How was it playing for him this year? Uh, it's great, man. You know, Coach Bud, he's like he's like. A, a father to me, you know, he's uh, always in contact with me, always communicating with me. Uh, I actually talked to him yesterday. And, uh, you know, he, you don't have to build that type of relationship with too many NBA coaches in the league. And I think that's the beauty of me playing for Atlanta and playing for Coach Bud. You know, he's, I think he's the one that really helped my career take a big step, and um, I give him all the credit. Now, as we said, many didn't expect you guys to make the playoffs, but ultimately you made the playoffs. What does that do for this ball club moving forward? Uh, it just shows, I think it shows our fans and, and shows everybody around the league that, you know, we're a great team and we're building something here. This is the first year, and Coach Bud is building the system here. I think the guys understand that, you know, that was the first year and, and you know, we're growing from it. But uh, ultimately, I think we're building something here. Um, we're just trying to, you know, turn our program into a winning program like the San Antonio Spurs. We're talking to Hawks forward Damari Carroll. And, uh, Damari, you look at you guys, and ultimately you would take the Pacers to seven games without Al Horford. You're getting Al Horford back next season. How close do you think you guys are away from becoming a, a contending team? Uh, I think we're kind of close. Um, a lot of people don't give us credit or, you know, call us underdogs, but, you know, we'll take that. You know, um, I think we won those teams, you know, we want to play some of our better basketball towards the end of the season, leading to the playoffs. And I think getting Al back and, uh, you know, probably getting a couple of guys in the draft and getting a couple of free agents, I think um, we'll be right back in the thick of things. And uh, hopefully nobody don't get hurt. And uh, we can stay the number three seed or two seed or one seed mm -hmm. all the way to the playoffs and, uh, you know, get right back there where we was uh, this year. 
and, and I want to go back to that Pacers series for one moment. In game six, that building was electric. I mean, that, that was probably the, the, the most uh, – you, you rarely see a crowd in Atlanta that electric, that hype, that exciting. How was game six in terms of the fans? I was good, man. The fans, they was they was the best, and I think they finally understand what what uh, Atlanta House basketball are becoming about. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing is our fan. Once our fans get behind us, you know, it helps some of uh, the guys on the team really boost their game. And I think, man, that game right there was was electrifying. And I think, you know, um, we kind of let them down, so we kind of on this next season. You know, we, uh, hopefully they'll come back out and show the same support and we'll uh, win the game like we should. Last season, you started 73 games. Your minutes was up career high in minutes. You averaged 32 minutes a game, career high in points, 11 points per game, career high in rebounds, five points, five rebounds per game. Were you happy with your play in 2014? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was really happy. Um, I think it was, you know, I, I, I realized that, you know, I just needed the opportunity and needed a coach that believes in me and, and a general manager and Danny Ferry who believes in me to bring me in. Um, but, I, you know, I think the best is yet to come for Damari Carroll. Um, you know, I felt like a rookie all over again. You know, I had coaches teaching okay. me all kinds of things. And I think, you know, this summer, Coach Quinn Snyder, he's been a big influence for me. And we're going to spend the whole summer together. And I think the best is yet to come for me. What do you need to do in this all season to become a better player? What What are you looking to improve on? What do you think you need to do to become a better player? I think me, uh, I want to always be the junkyard dog and be the, the blue collar guy I am. You know, um, okay. but I think me, you know, really being becoming a for sure thirty not forty percent knockdown three point shooter. Uh, you know, take my D up to another notch and uh, work on my ball handling and pick and rolls. And, you know, I just want to simplify things. I don't want to do things that that's not me, but I just want to get better at the things I can do. We're talking to Hawks forward Damari Carroll. Damari, I, I want to talk about the conference finals going on now, the Indiana Pacers, the Miami Heat, that series tied at one. Do you th- who, who wins that series in your mind, in your opinion? Who do you think is going to win that series? Uh, it's tough, man. I think Indiana, like we matched up good against Indiana. I think they match up pretty good against Miami. Uh, okay. You see Roy Hipper being a way effective the most he's been in the playoffs. But, you know, because um, Miami, you know, they, they run a different style than we do. So um, I think, man, it's up in the air, man. I think this this third and fourth game is going to be key. And uh if Miami can take two at home, it's going to be real tough for Indiana to get back in things. And you talked about Roy Hibbert. And Roy Hibbert struggled against you guys in the regular season, struggled in that series against you guys, picked it up near the end of that series. But watching Roy Hibbert play in that series, did you think he lost his confidence? Uh, yeah, I think he lost his confidence. And I think, um, you know, you got to understand we shoot a lot of threes. And uh, it, he was kind of out okay. of his comfort zone, you know, playing right. payroll antique, you know, stepping out shooting threes, Paul Millsap stepping out shooting threes, and then getting switched on guys like Jeff Teague, and he just blowing right past you. It's, it's kind of hard for Roy, you know, being 7-3. Uh, big like he is. So, um, you know, I think it's, uh, Miami, they don't shoot as many as three as we do. So I think, you know, he kind of back in his comfort zone, you know, down there banging with you, done his has him, and, uh, you know, being Roy Hibbert. Is it fun playing in a system where you can shoot that many threes? Yeah, it is, actually. You know, once you uh, <laughs> learn how to shoot them and learn your sweet spots, it's kind of fun, man, because, you know, before coming to Atlanta, I really didn't shoot that many threes. I was mostly yeah. mid range. Uh, mm-hmm. Now I can step out and shoot three, and but but really helped me with my confidence with that. And it's funny because I'm looking at your numbers right now. 2012, I mean, you shot one three per game. 2013, pretty much the same numbers. And then you go to the Hawks, and now you're shooting three threes a game. So, you, you know, I mean, you guys are shooting a lot of threes in Atlanta. So it's definitely a fun system you guys are playing. And I, I want to go to the Spurs and, and OKC right now. Spurs are up 2-0. And just watching that series, do you see the difference of OKC without Ibaka? Is it big? Oh yeah, that's that's huge. Um, Ibaka, you know, he he's a defensive guy mainly, but you know his offense goes unnoticed. And me being a defensive guy, I, I see how much he brings to that team, and you know, blocking shots and all those types of things. And, you know, the average fan don't really see that, but, you know, me, I see it, and the coaches see it. 
he's uh he's key, man. You know, you can't get in the lane easy and just shoot lay- layups like Tony Parker been doing. So I think he's real key. And, uh, you know, hopefully they can, uh, you know, probably they're going to have to change some things around, you know, to take uh, San Antonio out of their offense. Definitely. And I, I just, at this point, down 2 0 well, without a box, I just can't see OKC coming back. But, you know, they do have Durant, they do have Westbrook, so they do have some players. So we'll see. I mean, a lot of basketball definitely to be played. And I want to ask you this you are known for your defense, and who's the toughest player to guard in the NBA for you? Uh, it's got to be um, probably Kevin Durant. Um, okay. He, he, he's pretty tough. Um, but it's between him and uh, Carmelo. Carmelo, he's tough, too. You know, he's physical, one of those physical grind guys. But KD, he's really tough because, you know, he's 6'11", doing everything a six-footer would do. So um, it's kind of tough. And, you know, the ball always comes to him, and he always gets shots. So I always got to be prepared, and I always got to stay true to the defense. And, uh you know, coach sometimes get mad at me because he said I don't help a help a lot. But you know, when you got to guard <laughs> KD, it's kind of hard. We're talking to Hawks forward Damari Carroll. Damari, you have a basketball camp coming up in June. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, we got a basketball camp in June in um, Columbia, Missouri. Um, it's called Next Level Basketball Camp, and um, you know, I think it's really, really. Really, really good for a lot of fans and a lot of kids. A lot of fans are bringing their kids out. Uh, we're going to do a lot of one-on-one skills things and, uh, you know, help these kids, you know, grow. Because, you know, my belief is hard work is a talent. So, um, you know, I'm just going to teach them that, you know, you don't have to be the most talented uh, person on the court. But if you work the hardest, you know, your level of play will even out with that talented person. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's in June. So hopefully a lot of Mizzou people can come out. And then I think I got one in, in uh, July. In Atlanta, yep. so um, I'm looking forward for it. In June, it's June 9th to the 13th in Columbia, Missouri, and also in July, July 16th through the 18th in Atlanta. So fans support some of the great things going on with Damari Carroll. What can fans find information about all the great things going on with Damari Carroll? Uh, can you log on my website, www.damaricarroll5.com? Um, you know, it's easy. You can go to the camps and look at everything. And, you know, it just tell you about my life, man, uh, my journey to the NBA and all the things that, that have happened to me. Fans, again, support all the great things going on with Damari Carroll. Damari, I know you're on Twitter. Where can fans connect with you on Twitter? Uh, yeah, they can connect with me, uh, too, Damari Carroll 1. Um, you know, I always – you know, give fans feedback and let them know that I appreciate everything they do. So, you know, fans, um, shoot me a shoot me a tweet or a direct message, and I I hit you back at Damari Carroll one. Are you going to change that to, to Damari Carroll five at some point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that what we that what we're working on right now. But you know, I had one when I was at Missouri, so um, they want me to keep it at one because the Mizzou fans, you know, they go back okay. and forth with me being number one. Okay, okay, sounds good. Damari, a pleasure talking to you, man. Wish you nothing but the best of luck moving forward. Let's do it again. All right, thank you, brother. Take care.